Hello, welcome to the Honest War Game. I'm your host, Rob. Welcome to Stream Street Day. Who even knows anymore? In fact, I do know, actually. Uh, we're only a week away from the one year birthday of the Stream Street. So, very excited to talk about that. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the show. What's going on? Uh, today, I'm going to be looking at the list from the Vic GT. Uh, so, I've got some fancy graphics. Big shout out to Scrivo for that. Um, and I'll be looking at um, what can only be described as a, a dangerous event. That's all I'm going to put it as right now. I'll save the, save the surprise for you. In the chat, what's going on? Twitch chat, how are you all today? I just want to say hello to everyone before I get started. Um, Pragmatic, finally got my undergar against Dyson face mask. Arrived on Monday to Singapore. Oh, Pragmatic, thanks, man. Oh, like, looking forward to just that combo. That's all I want to see. Uh, faces and bases, happy Friday to you. Uh, lurking while working to pad the viewing numbers. Appreciate you, faces and bases. Gitly, uh, where is Adam? I thought he was on today. Uh, was he meant to be? I don't know. He was on yesterday, Gitly. Uh, hey, Rogelio, hope you're well. Uh, hey, Dan, don't. Big love to you. AOS Archie, good afternoon. I see that you've entered into a TTS tournament. That's fun. Just a little reminder for everyone that Hammer Time 8, uh, a five round Age of Sigmar TTS event run by the Owen Jackson, is going on and signups are available so you guys should check that out um i did some hobby paint on a model winning go on owen yes good man uh hello to tlac de durango saludos i can't sorry i don't know what you're saying hey sorry again watching through old shows it's amazing how far the stream streak has come so much improvement thank you sorry again i hope it has uh, been better and hell hydra what the hell uh thank you very much uh, for oh, just missed one. The notifications didn't say what that was. Oh god! One second, everyone. Uh, where's my stream labels? <sighs> Whatever. <laughs> Let me go see what that was. Uh, so hype for Hammer Time Eight. Yeah, so we'll be doing the coverage of Hammer Time Eight, so you guys can check that out. I'm hyped for that as well. I think that's going to be really fun. Um, uh, oh, Tory Rob donated five pounds three days ago. That was nice. Uh, anyway. Whatever. It doesn't say what Hail Hydra did, but thanks to whatever Hail Hydra did. Great. Lo loads of love to you. Um, I'd like to thank Scott B for saving me money. Now I've left a hobby after seeing this paid in. <laughs> Last night's show was really fun. Last night's show was really, really fun because it was really fun watching you as a community. So this is the 40k show last night. You as a community generally just be miles better than the show hosts <laughs> doing hobby. So the hobby review was just like, wow, that's actually really impressive. Well, well done. Good job there. Um, <laughs> it turned out, let's do it. Let's go have a time. Let's go. Uh, this is each Archeon build, a corn Archeon build. What about a Nurgle Archeon? Uh, not really applicable, really, unfortunately, skinny boots. A lot of the, the Nurgle buffs really rely on, they just don't work super well into Archeon. You can do an Archeon uh, Nurgle build and even the Sinesh one. It's just, they're just so much better in the Archeon and, and Zinch versions. Um, <laughs> boo, skinny boots, boo. <laughs> Scott P is now a villain. <laughs> uh, right, okay, Vic GT. Let's talk about that. Let's do this. This is what we're here for today. Um, so I've got some graphics. Da, 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 da. Thanks to Scrivo. Oh, actually, uh, I've just realized I need to make all my graphics bigger. So that's my own fault. Bosh. Oh, no, but then I go over the top of it. That ruins it. Oh, hold on. Oh God! Oh no! I need to I need to reorganise this. Uh, <laughs> oh, this is the wrong slide as well. This is a terrible start. Hello, everyone. This is the this is the first slide, and I'm going to improve it. There's meant to be two people, I think. This is why, like, whatever. This doesn't look very good. Um, and in fact, I'll just change it so that you guys can see it better. Because I'm more bothered about you guys seeing it than I am about the whole stream being like super fancy. So we'll just do this. I think this works a bit better. Let's do this. Hold on. And I'll just I'll just talk talk amongst yourselves for a moment. There we go. Right. So the Victorian Grand Tournament in Australia has got 70 players. And there's some famous names at the event. Right? Some famous names. You've got Corey. Yeah, smashing it up. You've got Michael. You've got... There's a bunch of different people uh, that, are, that are there. Coach is there. Um, talking about e-celebrities. Um like there's it's 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 a it's a great event like there's gonna be loads of people uh so that's in australia 70 players over five rounds this weekend starts in but a few hours these are the battle plans that they're playing uh here so they've got shifting objectives force in the hand knife to the heart total conquest and battle for the pass 
uh, a really nice mix there. Uh, obviously, uh, Total Conquest uh, favoring heroes. Knife to the Heart, a nice splitter, I think. Shifting Objectives, uh, I don't love Shifting Objectives, but whatever. Battle for the Pass uh, is a nice finisher, I think, uh, because uh, when you've got two armies uh, as a final game, I was thinking about this earlier, as a final game in a, in a tournament, it's quite interesting when you've got some of the armies that are going to improve and get like towards the top end. I think Battle for the Pass is a bit of a staring match in some situations. Uh, so I think, I think this is real. Now, this event is fucking deadly, is all I'm going to describe it as. Deadly. Like, they have, like, I, like, I know that there's been a couple of Australian events since lockdown finished, but everyone is going hard. I don't know if there's, like, some mega prize or, like, there's big kudos for winning the Vic GT. Who knows? But people have come prepared. These lists are, like, so we looked at the, uh, the event that we had over in Australia where we had it in Queensland a few weeks ago, and it was not this. That was a lot more friendly. This is pure rough housing this is uh it's pretty rough uh let's look at the percentages of the actual event here so uh i don't know if this works hold on i'm gonna just keep i'm so sorry lads and ladies i tried to do a better job uh, today and it turns out all i've done is just mess it up a little bit uh so never mind it's my own fault uh, right, there we go. Thanks to Scribs. He smashed it. Uh, right, so order and nearly 50% of the field. Now, uh, this is a big deal, right? Like, big deal. 50% of the field. Like, it's not 25, 25, 25. I know that that's not how the factions work anyway. There's a lot more factions in order. Um, eight factions here represented. Uh, 0 0.1 ladies. To all of you, nothing but love. Uh, the results for Vic GT won't be obviously until this weekend. Uh, sorry, till Monday. So me and Owen doing the stat show on Monday. Maybe we'll have stats. Maybe we won't. Who knows? Who knows? Uh, <laughs> however, the breakdown of this is pretty rough. Eight factions uh, come out for order. Or uh, Chaos have got six factions. Five in death. Uh, and Destruction got five. Is that right? That doesn't feel like... Oh, they're the factions. Yeah, factions uh, represented here. Um, so yeah, that, that's, that's, that's pretty good. Now, if we look at order... And I mean, the conversation about order being the best Grand Alliance, obviously, for competitive play, I think is very valid. Very, very valid. And then when we look at order, you'll look at some like terrifying numbers here. Uh, so again, let's just make that so you can see it. Uh, so Cities of Sigmar, there's two lists. Actually, one of my standout lists from this is in Cities of Sigmar. Richie James is running nine Raptors in Anvils of Heldenhammer, obviously. But he's got three Ballistas on top of it. Really 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 like that list like that's just like he's like fully committed the daughters of cain list you've got Corey and michael they're running uh this three dok list they've all got marathi i think i'm pretty certain like this is still old book so we've got the teleports available so that's pretty rough uh like that's a again really really strong uh the other city sigma list is like more like a mid-table fun fun list fire slayers is all Hermdar Berserkers. The one one of the armies has got Oryx uh, in with some shooters as well. Rough as houses. Four Fire Slayers armies is like you pretty much want to go to an event and just sidestep. Like when you list right and you're like, do you know what? Just hope I don't fight Fire Slayers. That's pretty much the case in some of my list writing. I'm like, hope I don't face them, and I just slide myself back. Six John Phipps. Big love to you. Hope you well. Six. Eidneth Deepkin armies, and they're all rough as nails. Eels for days. There's some, like, there's some stuff missing around, uh, like, messing around. There's some, like, there's no, nothing, like, overly different. Some of them have got um, a, an Eidolon, some of them don't have an Eidolon, but it's all just, like, yeah. <laughs> it's really, really, really tough. It's Salmon Cannon is available. Uh, and then there are four KO lists. Um, they're all pretty much what you would expect. Big shout out to my other favourite list from Order, actually, from a Dave. Oh God, Dave Cunning, Dave Winning. I wrote it down, but my handwriting is genuinely illegible. I might actually be illiterate. Uh, but Dave, Dave is running eight gun haulers. Check this out: eight gun haulers and a frigate with a spell in the bottle, and the spell in the bottle is uh, the uh, comet from Stormcast. So the end of spell of the comet. And I was like, oh, that's pretty good. And then you scroll back up and you're like, oh, Gotrek's in that list. Gotrek. Eight gun haulers and a frigate 
is just horrific. The IDK lists, by the way, six of them is terrifying. Now, the Lumineth Realm Lords, there's six of those lists. And one of the things that I've been talking about um, a lot recently is I think that Lumineth are like a really, really good army and possibly like a top tables army. You just got to play them well. And actually, maybe it's because I've been reading their lists in a more in a more friendly field. But when I was reading like Hearthguard Berserkers and then Lumineth and then Hearthguard Berserkers and Lumineth and then I was reading the Seraphon list, I was like, uh, maybe actually not. Maybe maybe that they're not that tier. Maybe they're a tier below. Like I'm thinking. Uh uh, but just really good. Uh, our aforementioned Seraphon Overlords, there are six, five of those. Uh, they're all like fangs or uh, salaman. Like it's rough as nails. Like it's it's all deadly is all I'm going to say. Like you've either got chameleon skinks, uh, uh, skinks or you've got uh, s- uh, sal- salamanders. There's just loads of them. Loads and loads and loads. Two, two Stormcast Eternal lists I've talked about as well there. Uh, just have a quick breakdown for you guys if you guys want to see it. I, Neth Deepkin, um, here's the breakdown. Uh, it got one Iron Arc, uh, one Domhain, and four Futh One uh, lists there. Uh, that's the breakdown. And the breakdown of the. Uh, they're all eels, man. It's just all eels all the time. Uh, the Seraphon. Let me just get this guy for you guys. As you can see there, um, is five players running five Fangs of Sotek. I know Owen's in the chat. How do you feel, Owen? <laughs> Five for five, baby. <laughs> Look at our our archetypes there by our sussy uh, thing. <laughs> uh, um, <laughs> I love that. It's just so good. So that's Grand Alliance order. Like it's like you read through order, and again, there like we talked about. That's almost fifty percent of the field, and it's rough housing, man. Like it's really serious. Even the, one of the Stormcast lists is like is nails. Each one of those lists is nails. The two Cities of Sigmar lists is a, a Tempest style list with a mixture of stuff. Uh, and there's also a Living City list. And again, you read through those lists and you think, ah, oh, you could play around in some other fields. But this is just, uh, <laughs> this is just, this is really serious, is all I'm going to say. This is like a rough, you could just basically lift the order players and put them in our own tournament, is what I'm going to say. There's a lot to unpack there. That's all, that's all there is. Now, the GA Destruction, um, as you can see here, we've got three Big War players, three Gloomspite Gits players. Shout out to you, boys. There's a nice 60 Gits list, which I really enjoy. Um, uh, yes, and there's also a Rock Guts list being played by Will. Really excited about that. Loads of Rock Guts. Uh, I'd be excited to see how that plays. Um, but, uh, unfortunately, uh, it... Uh, yeah, well, no, I'm excited to see how it plays. That's all I'm going to say. That's it. You got two Sons of Behemoth armies playing here. Um, uh, I think my man, I think my man Bradley's playing. Big love to Bradley. Love him forever. Uh, he's playing with Sons of Behemoth, and the coach is playing with Sons of Behemoth. So we've got two Sons of Behemoth players uh, trying to work it through. Ogre Moor Tribes. They've got three players playing at the event. Breakdown for the Moor Tribes. Obviously, it's all Stonehorns, uh, and then you've got two uh, two Boulder Head and one Blood Gullet. Uh, but it's all it's all the same. Uh, uh, if you guys want the lists, uh, hold on, I can just get you a link for the lists right now, so you guys can read through them together with me if you wish. Right here, rock guts are perfect. They're perfect, just like you can get that. You're perfect. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> nice presentation, by the way. Thanks, MJ Pegasus. Thanks to you. Uh, I hope it's getting better i just didn't plan for me not for it being just me so i need to do a new scene i've just realized anyway let's talk about grand alliance death there are three flesh eater courts lists uh three night haunt lists three legions and a gash and six that's right six ocr bone reapers those bone reapers lists actually this is where we get to have a bit of a fun conversation both chaos and death Really mixing it up. Now, the uh, <laughs> the OCR Bone Reapers list are all Mortis Praetorians, but, and this <laughs> Night Horn in this economy, uh, but the Mortis Praetorians, they're all, they, we got a bunch of different stuff. You got some with Stalkers in. Now, they're all pretty much Catacross and a Crawler, sometimes two Crawlers, but sometimes no Crawlers. And we're seeing a lot of 
um, Stalker stuck in, which I think is super interesting, actually. Uh, I really like that. Uh, and also a couple of Morgas, uh, uh, Morgas Harbingers put in as well, which I was like, okay, <laughs> okay, if that's what you want to do. Um, uh, but yes, that's right. Uh, such internal balance. So good. Now, if we go back to the Nighthorn, possibly um, two of my favorite lists at the event actually are from Nighthorn. So you've got Nicole with a Nighthorn MSU list, which is just, um, it's just like, Really digging that, really digging that, and then uh, and then you got Anthony uh, with his Legions of Grief list as well, which is really really nice. I'll just let me just go get the actual information on both of those two lists because I'd like to read them out here. Also, massive shout out to Joel uh, when he put that list together. Like you guys can see, it's broken down into the Grand Alliances, and it's so helpful for reading and putting information together. What an absolute legend! So brilliant work there. So Nicole's running Nighthorn with Lady Alinda and a Dreadblade Harrow and Reichnor the Grim Hailer. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven units of ten Chain Wrath Sword, ten Grim Gas Reapers, two lots of three Spirit Hosts, then two times five of Blade Geist Revenants, and then four times four Mimron Banshees and five Dreadside Herodians. And there's a Purple Sun and there's a Prismatic Palisade. So pure MSU. Nighthorn. I love this. Like, I'd be so interested to see how this plays um, and watch this on the tabletop. Like, that would be, like, a fascinating game. Uh, watch following that through the weekend. So, yeah, just really, really good. And the other list that was super fun from Legion of Grief is... Let me just talk about this for a moment. Uh, oh, is Arthur playing? Uh, Arthur's also got, by the way, uh, this is important uh, take, his Mortex Shield Cord list. He doesn't have... No, I thought he would have. I thought he'd have his uh, big brick of dudes, but he doesn't have his big brick of dudes. Um, uh, where is it? Oh God, this is the problem. Uh, no, no, come on, come on. <laughs> What's the list? Can't find it. I can't find it. It was a cool list, though. It was a really fun Legion of Grief list that I really liked, and now I've lost it. So I'm sorry, boys. Um, take about. Uh, What's uh, MSU Nighthorn new top tier? Question <laughs> mark. No, it is not the new top tier, uh, <laughs> but it will be fun to play. I think it would be fun to play. Uh, is what I'm going to get at, and loads of opportunities to make those charges. Right, that's going to be really important. Um, uh, Brisbane love Nighthorn. Uh, hey JJ, big love to you. Uh, uh, she's from Brizzy. Oh, nice. So lovely to see Nicole playing at an event. Uh, also really nice are the Vic GT boys and everyone else uh, to make a welcoming of a place um, uh, that ladies want to play into. All good, all day. Um, yeah, yeah, really interesting to play. Big MSU uh, plays. So that's there's also three Legions in the Gash players here as well. One of them super interesting with Neferata, Zombie Dragon, and two Terrorgeist as base. I think that's genuinely quite interesting. Uh, weirdly, no Wraith Fleet. <laughs> Where's all the Wraith, Wraith Fleet players at? That's the one. Uh, <laughs> oh, uh, oh, lovely. Nicole's in the chat. Lovely. Honestly, really like that list. I think that's going to be super fun. Can't wait to see how it does. Um, I think the best part about the insane board control that you have and all the clever screening that you can do. Also, loads of opportunities to roll that 10 plus to charge, right? Which is going to be really good. Um, chaos, again, unlike order, lots of... Uh, lots of messing around, lots of different lists, so not the standard archetypes. The reason I talked about order being so scary is it's just lots of the archetypes, whether it be Fang Skinks, whether it be Eels IDK, whether it would not be Marathi Bow Snakes in uh, Daughters of Cain, and whether or not it, it, like, a lot of these lists are just, like, the go-to lists, and they're just, they just perform incredibly well. Um, uh, Fire Slayers and, and those Hearthguard blocks, they're all really solid. Um, a lot of the archetypes that we see here and some of like the big boogeymen aren't really in attendance. There is a change host, Disciples of Zeech list, uh, so we'll just go over to that right now. But there's also some stuff that's a little bit more fun, which is quite cool. So you've got three Eternal Conflagration lists, and they are exactly what you think. But can we just do a big shout out to Corey Beal, yeah, with his Pyrophane Cult with 30 Karak Acolytes? Love that. Love that. No idea how he's going to do, but I think that that's really good. Um, yeah. Also, a uh, big shout out to Patrick Nevin, who's running a Gore Tide with two 
mind seal uh, spheranxes. Two mind seal spheranxes, which is super fun, but that's not uh, that's not in this. That's in our corn list uh, with the other, with a couple of corn archeons in there as well, which I know will make everyone happy. Um, there's also two beasts of chaos list. Uh, one as the breast of spoilers, and has got a bunch of gore, not gore, uh, bull gores. Uh, and then another one has got... I just read the word chaff eight times, I think was what I read on the list. Uh, so just to go through chaos again, two bases of chaos, two blades, three blades of corn, double ar- one archeon, another archeon, and the mind stealer spheranx list. No Legion of Asgore, no LO, uh, Legion of Ascendant, no Nurgle, one Skaven, which is just a mix. Uh, there's a Vermin Lord Warps here, some Clan Rats, some Gisales. Like, it's just a mix of stuff. There's And six Storm Fiends, which could still do some work in the matter, I think. Uh, one Heat Knights of list, which is uh, a Supreme Cybrites with a bunch of different uh, heroes. So you've got uh, a couple of Keepers, and then you've got some Chariots. Uh, the Slaves to Darkness list is our man Dave Kerr uh, with that Knights of the Empty Throne list with the um, Varangard and in the Playtouch Warband. So excited to see that play into it. We've seen that play at a couple of events. And also disciples, and he did came third at an event three weeks ago, and then you got disciples of Zinch. Uh, like I told you with the breakdown before, you've got um, a couple of change hosts, and you've got an Archeon in there as well. So that's kind of the the overall meta of the event, uh, basically. Um, so just yeah, and that went quite nicely. Was that too vague? I'm just asking you guys as a chat. I like that. That was. Instead of reading through 83 lists, I think that that's like a little bit more fun. So standout lists, just to just to double check for you guys, so you guys got it. Uh, Dave, with his eight gun haulers, one frigate, got trek, spell in a bottle. Uh, Richie James, with his nine stormcast raptors and three ballistas in anvils of Hell and Hammer. Big fan of that. Chaos, Corey, um, with his pyrophane colt and his 30 acolytes. And then Patrick, with his two mind sealer spherings in Gortide. Uh, and then over in Death um, was Anthony with his Legion of Grief. I love the list, but for some reason I can't find it. Uh, and then Nicole with her Nighthorn. Uh, and then Will in Destruction with his Rock Guts. Now, they stand out because they stand out, right? Now, just because you're running all the Hearthguard Berserkers in the Fire Slayers block is not bad. It's not bad because they're solid. We've got loads of those archetypes in attendance. Um uh, and then as also, yeah, John McGrath's also got his five Grim Wrath Berserkers with Got Track as well, which is another cool standout list, actually. I tried to just pick two from each from each Grand Alliance, uh, basically. Uh, but yeah. Uh, uh, are these lists available anywhere? Yep, there's a link in the chat. Thank you, Gitly. Big love to you. Um, Paraffin Court 1-4, I'm guessing. Le Trade Play, I think so. I think maybe... But like it will be fun to see how this plays afterwards. Now the I, the fun conversation I think is that uh, the archetypes definitely exist in Age of Sigmar, so it's definitely okay to talk about them and see. Because when normally when I do this with Owen or I do it with Adam or I do anyone with like a list review show, we talk about which list is going to do well, and ultimately the the differences are so slight that really it's going to come down to player skill. We have like if we go back to the kind of like the big breakdown. You have uh, four Fire Slayer uh, players in this army, all running those big bricks. Very, very possible that they could take out the event. Those are, that's a solid archetype. It plays really well. And if we go back to the missions, um, it's going to play most of these objectives pretty well. The major issue being Knife to the Heart. We'll see how they can play that. Um, Total Conquest and Battle for the Pass are all theirs. So if they get through, then they're all good. Um, uh, the Eidneth Deepkin are very solid. Like, super solid. Again, they can play all those objectives really well, and there are six of them. And it's all eels. Some are Eidolon, some have got Turtle, but it's all the same. Like, it's an incredibly potent army. Going to do really well. That's the one. Um, And then there's also... uh, So then the KO lists are also pretty deadly. I don't really rate their chances of getting through, ultimately. I think they'll do fine. Maybe 4-1, but I don't think they're going to 5-0 it. But we'll see. Could be wrong. I know a lot of people shouting out for Kron. I uh, want to bring it back home. The Lumineth lists are actually interesting. Uh, there is, uh, they're mainly Sire. Or oh, let me just get the actual stats for you so you can see. Instead of just me like half arsing it. One second, lads. Um, let's just bring this up. Ba, ba, ba. Uh, right. So, yeah, the uh, Sire is. Oh, 
<laughs> we haven't filled that yet. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Sorry, leave it at leave it at the mainly side. But the point is, it is the Teclis and Arulian Legion play, which we've seen a couple of times uh, in there. There's also there's also like a big character build. It just feels like slightly there's not enough bodies. As soon as I see Teclis and I read through, there's just not enough uh, bodies, and it just kind of makes me like unsure like i read through them and then having read the fact having read all of the other order lists before i even read uh like any of the others i was like nah, i don't fancy their chances that's what i'm saying so like and that's me changing my mind over the course of i'm uh, you guys can change my mind again i think maybe there's some players who'll be able to push that book right to the top but like maybe i just haven't seen it yet right who knows uh, hey benjamin what up uh, no, we won't be covering any games live. These are real life events. Oh, this is a real life event. One of two real life events that are happening this weekend over in Australia. Big love to everyone in Australia. Uh, well done on staying safe and healthy. Really proud of you, and I hope you have a smashing weekend, uh, which is going to be really nice. Uh, so yeah, uh, and the Seraphon archetypes that we're seeing at this event are all fangs, all deadly. So if I like, Owen normally makes me pick one from my head, one from my heart, and then a wild card. Like, my head has to just be order generally. I know that's a bit of a, a shit take. Um, but, like, the DOK players and lists are so good. They've performed really well recently in Australia and taken events out time and again. Um, the Seraphon lists are, like, top tier deadly. Uh, I think the Fire Slayers have got to sneak in. And because, um, in my opinion, the two best armies in the game right now are Seraphon and IDK. And both of them are very represented at this event. Like, very, very represented. So, I'm like,. I would say that either Seraphon or IDK are going to take the event out. So there we go. Um, now, it, my heart, who do I want to win? That's a great question. Um, kind of rooting for the uh, the Pyrophane Colt. And of course, the Rock Guts. That's most, inc- that's most important, if you, guys, <laughs> if you guys are interested. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, the Gloomswipe Gits. There's a really cool Gloomswipe Gits list with 60 Gits. I'd like to see you do well, but we'll see. There was, there was. Don't forget that uh, the event in Australia a few weeks ago, we ended up with six Gloomsplate Gits players, and the best we managed to get out of them was two three. We never managed to get a three two. So if Gloomsplate Gits get a three two at all at this event, I'm super happy. Like I'm re- like four one, and I'm I'm cheering. Right, that's what I'm saying. Like I'm cheering it on. Um, going over to death, uh, Flesh Eater Courts have got. I still think Flesh Eater Courts have got some really solid play really 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 um good play but i think that they they're up against it now the legions of nagash and the uh legions of nagash and the legions of grief i think have got some real chances real chances as long as they can keep those heroes alive that's really important um but i don't think that they're in for my heart either wild card <sighs> no idea no idea is it the archeon corn no <laughs> I don't know what my wild card is. I don't know what my wild card is. Who can I pick? I'm gonna pick Richie James with those nine Raptors. Just gonna shoot everyone off. That's what he, no wild card. That's not gonna work because it, there's too many bodies in the skinks. You just die. There's no wild card. <laughs> so I'm put it out. Let's do more tribes. Fine, more tribes can be the wild card. Although they're not gonna do it. They're not going. The, the pass can be my wild card, but he's not zero. He's not five and zero. Oh. That's what I'm gonna say. Anyway, how's that been for everyone? Was that too light on information? Would you have liked to see the lists in detail and me read through 70 lists? Or was that all right? That's my question uh, to you guys. This is okay. Uh, Sinesh, there's one Sinesh list here. Uh, that's not a wild card. Nope, 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 nope. I looked at it and I was like, well, that's dead. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, read all 70. <laughs> I refuse, point blank. Uh, yeah, I've, I have read them. I'm just not reading them out like some sort of teleprompter. Uh, so yeah, good luck to uh, maybe a deep review of the fave list as T-Man Cash. Okay, all right, I'll put that into my show notes for next time um, of my fave list. Well, I could go through some of them now. Uh, uh, good surface level with vibe. Thanks, Draconda. Thanks. Like just deep. I mean, it's weird because no one wants to get quite as techy as me sometimes. Oh, oh no, wait, Anthony Quilty. Is that the guy with the? Uh... Yes, with Legion of Grief list. I love this list, right? So Legion of Grief, Dreadblade Harrow, um, uh, and Night of Shrouds on Ethereal Steed, Guardian Souls with Nightmare Lantern, 
Necromancer and a Spirit Torment, then 40 Chain Rasp Horde, 2 times 10 Zombies, 20 Grim Gas Reapers, 5 Revenants, 2 Chain Gasps, 2 Dread Scythe Haradins, and 8 Banshees. So it's just like a full mix of stuff. And he's going to be able to like drop them off. A bit like the MSU list that Nicole's running. You're going to be able to drop off like these little units and hold a big objective with the Chain Rasp Hold, or keep your characters alive with the Chain Rasps, but move around the board and at any opportunity, because he's got some very mobile characters, any opportunity, bring those units back because he's playing Legion of Grief. Chef's Kiss. I think you could play this army better and better the more you play it, and probably probably not a win an event, like, but maybe threaten to win an event, and I think that that's a really good place to have a list in. I think that's that's super, super good. Uh, so I really like this list. I think it's just really nice. Really, really nice. Yeah. Uh, which list would you expect to see in? Seraphon or IDK? They're all the same, so it doesn't matter. Uh, if that helps you. <laughs> I think we should critique Rob's presentation at the start of last night's hobby review. Wow, that's rude. Uh, <laughs> Uh, there's a tournament in Israel tomorrow. Nice. Can I share my list? Uh, please do. Uh, how about challenge reviews to come up with an anti meta list, something that could do well versus order lists, etc. Challenge Darren. You could, but there just isn't like that. Like, it's, like I believe in all of you. Like from the bottom of my heart, you're all brilliant. But there's no way to beat those lists. Like it's just one of them will win. That's all I'm gonna say. Uh, that's not me being defeatist. That's just the statistical facts and also like i feel like i've got enough of a good enough grasp of the game to understand how it's going to play out um uh can you find the pair of paraffin coal list yeah so it's already in this link here if you're interested but i'll talk about the paraffin coal list in a moment if you just give me a sec to go up again thank you very much to joel for organizing these super well uh, and also for filling in our sheet so we could uh, put it all in so i hope the event goes super well this weekend i said super too many times don't like that <laughs> let, me, let me talk through the order lists. Do you want to hear them? Because they're rough as hell. They're rough as that. They're, they're so rough. It's <laughs> right. So Joel Joel's running a fun Fire Slayers list, right? Where he's got Gotrek and he's got five Green Wrath Berserkers. Lovely in Forge Rathrin, right? And then you've got um, uh, Nicholas with a kind of like like he's some some stuff he's got, which is lovely um, uh, for Stormcast. And then uh, Nicholas, love, love and love. Then you've got Matt who's got, let's just get this right, an Alapex with a net launcher, and then he's got two lots of six Morsar Guard, three uh, defensive eels, and then he's got a Leviadon. Uh, Lumineth Realm Lord, we're going to skip the Realm Lords, because it's just, it, they're all the same, basically. They're not all the same, but like it's just like, ten of this, ten of that. Um, then you've got Brad, with his Seraphon, he's got uh, two times 40 Saurus Warriors, this is in Cottle's Claw, oh, um, this has not been updated right. Sorry, and in the Sunclaw store, Starho, so our graphics was wrong. Sorry about that, uh, gentlemen uh, and ladies, uh, everyone, and folks. That's the right one. But he's got Croak, he's got Starseer, he's got Scarvet, uh, and the Sunblood. Super cool list, uh, and also really, really dangerous. Really good. Uh, then you've got another Fangs list with 40 Skinks, 30 Skinks, two Salamanders, three Salamanders, Croak, and all the accompanying characters. Then you've got Deepkin with three times three defensive eels, an Eidolon, and then he's got an, two Alapexes with shooters, uh, and then two Alape one Alapex with a net and a Leviadon. You've got another Deepkin list, three times three, uh, two, two times three defensive eels, um, one unit of offensive eels, one unit of full unit of sharks uh, with the harpoons, with the guns, and a Leviadon, uh, and an Eidolon. <laughs> it's so harsh. Uh, then you've got Corey with his DOK list, which we talked about before, where he's got Marathi, he's got the Soul Seeker, he's got the Shadow Stonkers, he's got the 20 Bloodstalkers, so they're going to shoot twice and delete the Earth. Uh, then you've got Hayden, he's got his Seraphon with his 2 times 40 Skinks, 2 times 5 Chameleon Skinks, which I always love. The Vanguard Raptors Allies, which is I also love with the Aether Wings, they're in there. Croak, the Stana and all the characters again. Super rough, super tough to play against. Uh, another Fangs of Sotek list. 40 Skinks, 2 times 10 Skinks, 3 Salamanders, 10 Chameleon Skinks, Croak, and a Prime. Horrible. <laughs> Just horrible to play against. Michael Clark, he's got Marathi. He's got the uh, Lakwan, the Soul Seeker. He's got the 15 Bloodstalkers. 
30 Witch Elves, like Corey's list, that's going to play similar. Uh, another Fangs list, 40 Skinks, 30 Skinks, 20 Camo Skinks, Star Priest, Star Priest, Skink Priest, Croak. Uh, like, man, it's so rough. Charles Black, all the Hearthguard Berserkers, big love to my man Charles, in Herbdar. Like, he did super well at um, CanCon last year. He's going to smash with that list. Matt Tyrrell, like, he's going to do super well with six uh, offensive eels. Three, two times three uh, defensive eels. He's got two sharks um, uh, with net launchers and another single shark with a net launcher and a Leviadon. Um, again, a very good player. Uh, Jacob with another 15 Bloodstalkers in Calibron with Marathi. They're going to shoot twice. Ian, uh, not Ian, sorry. Um, uh, Adam with 20 Hearthguard Berserkers, 10 Hearthguard Berserkers in Hermdar. In Lords of the Lodge, it's going to smash face. It's just such a horrible field. I'm just repeating myself now, but Herbdar, Adam Bray, yeah, 20 Hearthguard, 20 Hearthguard, 20 Volkites. Really like this list. Going to hurt you so badly. <laughs> Nicholas Zambo <laughs> with uh, four, no, five threes of Morsar Guard, a six of Morsar, Morsar Guard, and some Aether Wings. Horrific. So. It's so terrible. So it's almost like, like I know Agile was asking, can you come up with an anti-meta list? No. Like, they're going to smash. Oh, Kill Switch, thanks for subscribing. Uh, big love to you. Um, yeah, thanks everyone. Uh, how many Marathis? Three. The th but all three DOK lists have got Marathi in. Which really does... Uh, do you know what? We can go back to a quick thing uh, that I did when I talked about the Daughters of Cain Broken Realms book. And I said, I didn't know at the points value that Daughters of Cain are now, if we're going to see Marathi taken by Daughters of Cain players. I was like, it's a little bit more expensive. Like, that's normally an issue. Um, are we going to see it? I think ultimately because everything else in the Daughters of Cain book came down, no dramas. And, Daughters of, and Marathi is probably going to be in every list. Like, probably Techlist will be in every list. We'll see what happens with the new stuff. Um, but we'll see. Um, parents don't raise kids to be like this. <laughs> Uh, pragmatic Matt Tyrrell winning with Nighthorn, which yeah, so Matt Tyrrell, excellent player, playing with now a very scary army. Um, he, Asteroid TV, yes, give me some skinks. <laughs> uh, Volzen, you painted up some fire slayers, good man. I'm happy with that. So, so that's the review. That's the review. Q and A time. Any questions? Any thoughts? Uh, anyone want to ask anything? Otherwise, we can be done for the day, which is nice. Um, not that I want to leave you guys. I just, uh, I just like to box the show off as a subject and then send it into the the aether uh to to have uh 18 people watch on youtube uh, <laughs> thank you to all my youtube bros by the way and ladies thank you please leave like comment subscribe and all that jazz uh and also thanks to the podcast bros i hope it's been okay um uh only just arrived joke plc what up okay this guy isn't working here's the list Three Pestilent Battalions, Vermilor Corruptor, two Plague Furnaces, 10, 110 Plague Monks, two times 40 and two small ones, Endless Vortex Spell, uh, three CP. Uh, I like your list, Zaidi Guy. It's nice seeing people run that Pestilence army for Skaven. I'd love to see uh, the Skaven book redesigned a little bit so that they were broken down more into those different clans that we see. Uh, 110 Plague Monks is going to do a lot of output if you can get them into combat. Like, they're going to be really good. Um, what is the Sinesh list? It's Supreme Cyberites with some Keepers and some Chariots and some Minimal Chaff. Uh, and I don't think that's going to go super well. Uh, but we'll see. I could be wrong. Big love to the player playing them. Uh, any Bone Reapers? Yes, absolutely. Uh, I showed it on the screen earlier, but there are six Bone Reaper players. Uh, they're one of the most popular factions at the event, and they're all playing Mortis Praetorians. Every damn one of them. Um, no one's streaming the tawny. Uh, <laughs> I thought it was going to be a narrative event since Dave Kerr. Dave, is it just me or is it like horrific? Why? <laughs> so Dave's playing at the event <laughs> and he's a fucking lovely fella. Um, but it is terrifying, this event. Like, oh boy. Even if I turned up with like dick kicking Seraphon, I'd be like, there's still a lot to deal with, man. There's a lot of other rough armies to beat. Um, uh, Dan Don't I'll be doing a 3D pa uh, printing Patreon at the 
end of the month, but before the new month begins. That's when I'll do that next show. Um, uh, DOK and Snesh are the old book because we don't have an FAQ yet. Oh, nice. Okay, Curly Joe. In which case, I quite like the Supreme Cyber Rights build. That's nice. Old book better. Uh, you got you got uh, Sylvaneth. Hope never for an FAQ for, <laughs> for the Slash book. Uh, because, uh, yeah, it's way better then. Uh, uh, what army are you surprised by? I think I'm mainly surprised by the representation, if we go back to the, the stats, the, the representation for death. Because it was interesting, a couple of weeks ago when we looked at the event uh, up in, like, further north in Australia, over in Queensland, uh, big shout out to those all those folks, love them loads. Uh, there was a lot of destructions in attendance, like a lot. Like they like, And it just wasn't a cutthroat field. Like, it just wasn't. There was not... Whether that was, like, a cultural thing and they were, like, try not to be a dick and, like, bring a bunch of stuff. Not that I think bringing competitive stuff makes you a dick. But do you know what I mean? Like, temper your... Temper your... This is just all daggers. This is, like... Yeah. <laughs> this is a this is a big, tough field. Uh, so I think that's really the surprise. Um, mate, it is rough. <laughs> yeah, it's rough. <laughs> Uh, Draconda, are there other other people who stream tournaments? There is actually. Uh, there are there are a bunch of people who stream tournaments. Um, but like the quality. So uh, talking about people who stream tournaments, obviously, uh, fail charge. Uh, so our friends over in Australia, they definitely uh, stream tournaments. I'm not I'm not sure why they're not at the minute. Uh, big shout out out to Gemma and Michael. They just got engaged. Uh, so they normally are the ones who do it. Um, so they do they do really well and they try super hard. Uh, there's also for 40k. There's a lot more for 40k. So Alliance Open, they try and stream some events. Um, as well um, we're going to be obviously streaming events in, in the future it's hard to organize though like i don't wanna, like i don't wanna, like cry about it but it takes a lot of people to volunteer and you don't make tons of money like and you have to spend a lot of money like on equipment and travel and other stuff so we, like i'm super super lucky that we got the tsn arena so we can do more live coverage in the future it doesn't necessarily cost us money so we might be able to do more live coverage without it the the cost and and all that scale generally being a problem here locally which is great but we should still be able to support massive events wherever they are in the world like i'd obviously like to go back to concon cancon i'd like to go to queensland and do some events there i'd like to go to sweden norway and germany and france and italy and do all those events as well so i still would like to go away but it generally it's quite hard to like make it cost neutral even so um it's like but it's growing, right? Hopefully what we're doing is we're growing the industry so that more people can do it, which is cool. Uh, more local places can do it. And then like we can be like the cutting edge of the professional, which is weird because as you guys know, me being the cutting edge of any profession is monstrous. Um, that's the answer. Um, uh, <laughs> did you guys ever do the custom order objective markers on Monday show? I know you're going a few weeks ago, but two new battle dropped. Did you guys do custom order objective markers? Oh, no, I'm not sure we did, actually, Volson, right? Good point. Um, uh, do I think AOS 3 June, July? 100%. I think July probably is the, the best, safest bet. I think it's interesting having conversations about events happening October, September. So I'm pretty certain that'll be new edition Age of Sigma. I think July will be new AOS 3, uh, if that helps. Uh, Pendigo's pretty much Mad Max last. <laughs> I would agree with that. Uh, um but they have options. How dare you try and grow the QA? <laughs> CanCon got tentatively announced for 24th, 20th Jan. Nice. Uh, I'd very much like to go to that, even if uh, people don't want to. Uh, I've been so lucky that the Australian community have um, nutted up and crowdfunded me to fly over there for the past two years. Uh, and if they don't want to do that this year, then I'm going to try and find my own way there no matter what, because it's just such an amazing group of people to be around. And I'd love to be there. That'd be fun. Canada, I'd like to be there as well. Unrelated question. How much do you think the new Warhammer animation move was to cover up for the implosion of Storyforge? Uh, it says Born Again Manchild. Great question. Came up yesterday, didn't it? Uh, we talked about it on the 40K show. Um, one of the things that I didn't talk about yesterday uh, on the 40K show, we talked about uh, Games Workshop having a bunch of uh, 3D artists and animators who like made a load of money. Like They were making loads and loads of money on their Patreons. Um, and all their Patreons and YouTubes have closed down, and now they've all come under a Games Workshop banner. Feels a bit, um, I, I'm not being like a Games Workshop basher here, but it feels a bit like lawyers stepped in, had a bit of a word, and they were like, you can work with us and we'll get you some pay. But the important story that most of us missed is that a former TV executive who used to work for Hasbro has been hired by Games Workshop. Let me get the actual information. 
because uh, I don't want to I don't want to like half ass it to you guys. Give me a sec. Um, um, where is it in one of my eight thousand chats that I never reply to? Because uh, <laughs> there's just too many people, man. Uh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, it's uh, this is it. So a guy called uh, Arneson. Uh, so I'll read the uh, Warhammer Owner Games Workshop has appointed former Turner Broadcasting and Hasbro Studios executive Finn Arneson as its first head of entertainment development to renew its focus on its content strategy. Reporting to John Gilliard, Games Workshop's EVP of Global Licensing, Arneson is tasked with mining the extensive and multifaceted Warhammer universe, home to thousands of novels and short stories, featuring a diverse range of characters, blah, blah, blah. Um, so that's uh, actually massive news. So I'm pretty certain what we've seen from the, the closing down of, uh, of Astartes and all that, pretty certain we'll be getting a Warhammer flicks, or there'll be a paid subscription service, won't they, to a TV series like a TV platform like netflix or uh, disney plus and i think that they'll be creating their own ecosystem and putting their own tv shows in it which is a bold move um i probably would like put it out into the i would probably like pitch to netflix and let them have a tv series instead of like setting up my own but who knows um yeah join us or die i think that was the right one um they've got a great potential for video content but not if it's behind their own pay what's it's got to be um uh, this man fucked up Wizards of the Coast and Magic the Gathering. Is that true, Wellmar Winters? I'd like some more information. Um, uh, thank you, T-Man Cash, for the link. Uh, uh, for Hammer Time 8, will the new DOK rules be playable? Green is good. I'm pretty certain they will be uh, because the FAQ should be out by then. But we know what Age of Sigmar FAQs are like. Uh, you're more likely to get a Warcraft FAQ. Uh, tell that Akin Jilub. <laughs> We've got a 50 play tournament next weekend here in Perth called Battleshock. If the list are anything like these, um, Cat Across my boys are in for a teeth kicking. You should, um, they are. Could you get the guys to send us the information for the event, please? Or get a TO to get in touch? I would like to find out more information about that event, please. Um, uh, it's a few videos. Hasbro quality department. Uh, <laughs> yeah, what does everyone else think about? So, like, Try and like, let's try and take our negative hats off. Not that we're, any of us are ever wearing them. But what do you guys think about, number one, Warhammer content in video form, thumbs from Rob. Super excited about that prospect. Very much looking forward to it. Big fan of TV, big fan of cinema, big fan of storytelling in that medium. Love a good bit of cinematography. Very excited about storytelling available in that realm. How do you guys feel about it? Are you excited about it? Do you think it being its own content platform is a good idea? Or would you like to see them farm it out to like Amazon Prime and, and Netflix and all that other jazz? What are you thinking? Um, uh, I think it's a good move by Games Workshop if they don't start for content creators. Uh, more resources for content is a good thing, says Jake Stefano. Uh, I just can't see them putting out enough content to justify a sub-model, says Born Again Manchild. That's true. Super true. Uh, could this be a sign that Hasbro might join up with Games Workshop? I thought about that earlier today. Maybe. People love that rumor, don't they? Not sure. Um, to produce consistent rate of content, the quality can't be very high. Blizzard's famous cutscene videos, for example, are impossible to sustain for any length of film, says Gimme. Good point. Uh, I don't think it was a legal thing, just more professional outsourcing of it, says Rabbit Bunny. Uh, I'm not sure. Like, listen, you're making quarter... Like, the Astartes guy was making quarter of a million a year. Like, <laughs> you'd, there'd be a lot... You, like. You do your own thing with your own community. Like now, I don't make tons of money. If Games Workshop came knocking at the door, it's very unlikely I'd answer, the, I'd answer it. Like, very, very, very unlikely. They would have to be like a very serious contract where they couldn't mess with me as a content person. Like, and also a lot of money. Like, and probably still then, no. I much prefer being under my own steam. And I don't make a lot of money. Like, if I was making quarter of a million a year and under my own steam, you would have to get a lawyer out, is what I'm saying. Like, uh, okay, even if he wasn't making 250k all the time, 100k, anyway. Um, uh, put it on Netflix, get more exposure and limits the money. Uh, yeah, Mandalis, I'm with you. Uh, they stress that you should have my, my Warhammer account in the announcement. Probably will just be premiered on my Warhammer for the hardcore faithful and go on streaming services. Okay, that's an interesting take. I like that. Uh, it would be nice to see more animations related to the new series releases. You mentioned about that this a few times. Hand animators and other artists, it was a good start. 3D hexes, I'm with you. 100%. I'd like to see more of that. Um, 
<laughs> I imagine the lawyer talking about that starting for an IP to face consequences. You can't really pick how when you voice your IP. It's curly Joe. Good point as well. Good point as well. Um, uh, <laughs> Lord, a bit. I'm still mad. <laughs> anyway, anyway, interesting, interesting bit of news. Uh, and I guess the other bit of news is waiting for more releases. Waiting for more releases. More good stuff to come out for the game generally. Uh, very excited to see how these uh, this event happens at the weekend. So the Vic GT. Um, I would like you guys. Uh, like you can. I'm sure you can follow it along on Twitter. We'll be talking about the event results on Monday. Me and Owen on Monday talking about the event results. Very excited about that. Um, uh, so it's going to be fun. Two events that we get to cover. So it's going to be super cool. Uh, thanks very much for tuning in. I don't have any. There's no more questions in the chat, so I'm going to go for the day. You guys have been lovely. Uh, just a, there was a question about Path to Partner. We're still waiting to hear from um, Twitch if we'll ever be a partner on the platform. Uh, we have to keep consistent num numbers above 100, um, uh, and then we have to go like the, the only two requirements are you have consistent numbers above 100. And then, so like every day, like, so on my average, so you you need to have the average number of viewers needs to be maintained above 100 for a period of time, which we've already fulfilled. Uh, but like, if it drops off now, I don't know, maybe they're waiting to see if it will drop off. Not certain. And then just be live for a certain amount of time, which obviously we smash because we're live all the time for like billions of hours. So we smash all, we smash all of the actual like requirements. Uh, but thanks for tuning in anyway. To be honest, who cares at this stage? As long as you guys tune in and are enjoying it. That's all I care about. There we go. Um, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, pray for part. <laughs> uh, right, you guys are great. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, any questions? Obviously, you can fire them at me on like Twitter and other stuff. Um, anything you want to see on the show? Don't forget a week on Sunday, so the twenty first of March, we're doing an all day special to celebrate the year of the Stream Streak. So twelve until ten. Twelve till ten. Loads of special guests. Um, Vince. Uh, as already Owen, um, Dayton, Tom, Neil, Nick, uh, Nathan. Uh, so basically, because I was like, do I go and get loads of like, famous people? And I'm like, I'm going to get the Honest Wargamer crew on. All the people who you know and love, people who have been on Sam Morgan, uh, the Rage of Sigma boys. Uh, so I've asked a bunch of people. So it's going to be uh, it's going to be a really fun time. So do join it, tune in for that. Uh, you guys are great. Thanks very much. Uh, podcast bros, love your tones. Um, uh, don't, you know, whatever. Drink loads of water. Merry Christmas. Ah. <laughs> I'm just going to fucking go. This is so embarrassing as an ending. <laughs>